Hello everyone. In this video, we will be going over the standard template for the technology budget. This template must be used by all projects that are subject to gated funding provisions outlined in the most recently passed operating and transportation budgets. It provides the office of the CIO, OFM, and the legislature with a standard reporting view for all projects and provides us with the ability to track project actuals in a uniform way. As a reminder, the technology budget is a living document that will be updated regularly throughout our project. With that, let's get started on using this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet contains five tabs that projects will need to interact with. The tab names are Inputs, Summary, Budgeted Resources, Agency In-Kind Resources, and Deliverables. Let's start with the Inputs tab. As you can see, this tab is laid out as a worksheet and basically is seeking some high-level information about your project. Most of the interaction that you will do on this sheet is data entry. When you input data in this form, it will populate other fields across the workbook with data. Where possible, dropdowns are used to save you time and minimize the risk of typos. I will be working from left to right in populating this form. The first step will be picking your agency name from cell D7. Notice that when you select your agency name in the dropdown, the text in cell C1 changes to match the value selected. Next, you will input your project name in cell C9. Again, the project name will populate other cells as you can see in the header under cell C2. Moving down the line, you would input your project contact information in cells D11 through D13. In cells D16 and D17, you will input your project's start and end dates. In cells D20 and D21, you will input the total project costs from initiation through closeout. These values should represent the total project estimates as accurately as the project knows them at the time that the technology budget is developed. A reminder again that this is a frequently updated document and should reflect accurate costs as time goes on. When filling out this section, projects should include both budgeted costs approved in the budget and anticipated in-kind resource costs as well. So I've already populated this with some sample values for what my budgeted cost and my in-kind resource costs are. As you're thinking about these two fields, your in-kind resources are the existing staff and other resources that will work on the project. You will not request additional funding from the legislature for these folks, and they probably already work for you. The last section on the left-hand side of the screen is a place to input the various gate approval dates and amounts. This section begins in cell C25. As you receive gate approvals, this section will be updated to include the date of approval and the dollar amount approved. The budget bill language requires projects to use distinct account coding to track costs for the project at large and for each gate of the project. As I move to the right-hand side of the worksheet now are the values where agencies will input the unique coding that will be used to monitor and track the project actuals in AFRS. Filling in this section of the worksheet is how you will comply with the account coding requirements from the operating budget. Beginning in cell I4, enter the unique appropriation index if it is known for the project's costs. Next, in cell I6, enter the AFRS code you will use to track costs for the project from initiation to closeout. This code should be used for the life of your project to tell the story. So in addition to keying in the value, you're going to want to select the field in AFRS that that value will be associated with. So I'm going to go ahead and use organization index which you can select from the drop-down below. When actuals are incurred against the project in AFRS, all transactions need to be accompanied by whatever this code that has been identified in these cells is. If your agency needs to use a different code than the values that are in this drop-down, you can type in whatever that AFRS field is in the cell instead of selecting from the drop-down menu. Notice that when you hit enter, you'll be prompted to ensure that the data is accurate and correct before submitting and that you have selected a value that is not from the pre-populated list. Go ahead and select OK to ensure that the codes are accurate before proceeding. 
If your project is over $100 million from start to finish, the next item is for you. The budget bill requires projects over $100 million to be broken into subprojects with each subproject tracked separately. Contact the OCIO for assistance on splitting your project into subprojects and filling out this form if you have a project that meets these requirements. Additionally, the budget bill requires funding to be made available in discrete stages of the project instead of all of the funding being available at one time. The next section, beginning in cell G13, is where projects need to identify their gate codes. Be sure to write the titles of your gate in these rows, as well as the AFRS code and field your agency will use to track the project's budget and actuals. My project has three gates, planning, procurement, and closeout. I've indicated the AFRS code that I will use to track these gates in cell I-13, I-14, and I-15. I've also indicated the AFRS field that those codes will be charged to in cell J-13, J-14, and J-15. Lastly on this section, beginning in cell I-24, we have some staffing assumptions for benefits. These values are used in other sheets for resource plan estimates. These values are a default. If your agency has an additional assumptions document that you would like to incorporate, feel free to input them here. On the far right pane in columns N through R is a helpful resources section. This section contains hyperlinks to useful resources for IT projects, OFM accounting principles, and OCIO processes and programs. That wraps it up for the key information on the inputs page. Let's go ahead and move on to the next page. The next tab that we will be covering is the budgeted resources tab. This tab here is the real bulk of the technology budget itself. Notice at the top of my screen, it is pre-populated with values from the input section. The budgeted resources tab is used to input anticipated spending values that were provided to the project in the operating budget. These resources are the resources the agency requested in order to complete the project work. It is broken up into several numbered sections which are identified in column B. Moving from top to bottom, the first section is for state employee staffing costs. This section is for specific project resources that will be paid for using funds identified in the budget bill or those that you plan to request in the future. This is not where you plan for existing agency staff on the project. We will get to that section shortly. This section is for contract waiver that will be coded to some object ER. Section three is for contracted professional resources. Projects should budget for expenditures that will be paid from object C here. I will provide a quick voiceover of the distinction between these two types of expenses. If the services are unique or infrequent or are consulting, advisory, or intellectual in nature, you would code those expenditures to object C. If the services being contracted for are part of core day-to-day -day business operations or are not predominantly intellectual, consultative, or advisory in nature, those expenses would be coded to subobject ER. If you're not sure what type of expense goes where, there's a coding workflow document published by OFM that is linked to on the inputs tab that will help you identify what type of costs should be budgeted for in which section. If you have additional questions, don't hesitate to contact your OFM analyst or agency budget division. Section four is for planned expenses related to software licenses and subscriptions. Section five is for hardware and equipment, and section six is for other expenses. So that is the grouping structure of the workbook at a high level. In each of these sections, if you need more rows to completely fill out your technology budget, you can unhide additional rows as needed. To do this, Highlight the entire row that includes the text, unhide to add more rows, right click, and select the unhide option. Also, each section contains a running subtotal for that section in this unhide row that allows you to see a summary budget of each section. Next, I wanna draw your attention to columns J through AG. These columns indicate fiscal months in the biennium. I will refer to these as the months column for the rest of this video. Projects will need to estimate costs in the month that they anticipate spending them. For years beyond the current biennium, data is expected to be input on a fiscal year basis. You can see those out year columns in columns AH through AP. As just another reminder, the budget bill outlined a stage process to receive funds for your project instead of all at once. 
The next section that I will be showing is how to represent your project gates within the technology budget. As we look at the area around the months columns, you'll see in row four we have a bunch of ones. You may also notice a red line in column I. These values are used to indicate when gates start and stop. In order to change these values, you would type the number that corresponds to the gate which begins in that month. This should align to the values on the inputs tab. So for example, my sample project has three gates. Let's say that my second gate will start in January of fiscal year 2020. I would input a two in cell P4, and you'll notice that lines have appeared in the sheet to indicate the months that the gates span. I'm projecting gate two will last 12 months, so I'll add a two in each cell until January of fiscal year 2021. Then for my final gate, I would put a three in cell AC4 to show how long gate three is anticipated to last. And that will run through the biennium through column A. Placing gate numbers in row four is very important as it populates data that is used for reporting on gate start and stop time throughout the project. As you're completing your technology budget, you should ensure that the gate values are accurate. So next up, I wanna talk about the state employee staffing costs section. This begins in cell C7. This section has been pre-populated with a position list for available positions in the state HR system. Additionally, it has salary ranges, rates, and benefits calculations pre-populated. When completing this section, you want to denote what positions will be assigned to the project and once what step those positions are. Then, for each month that those resources plan to work on the project, you will input the value as a full-time equivalent, or FTE, in the month columns. So let's build some resources for my project plan. I know I need a management analyst, so I will select that role from the dropdown. Notice that the range was automatically populated. You will need to budget for the step that that position is at as well. So I'll just select a value here. And notice that the salary and benefits are automatically calculated for that position. I'm going to need this resource staffed full time on the project for the entire duration. So I'm going to put a one in each of the months columns to indicate that this is an, a full time equivalent staffed to the project. I also know that I will need a communications consultant assigned to this project. I don't anticipate to use them full time for the entire duration of the project, but I do anticipate to need them full time in some months. In this case, I would put decimal values in the months that they won't spend full time in the project and a one for months where they will be full time in the project. So for gate one, I'm gonna plan for this resource to be half time. While in gate two, I expect them to be full time on the project. Notice that I input a one value for when I expect a full-time equivalent and a half value for when I expect them to spend half time on the project. I expect them to drop to half time again in gate three, and I'll populate the values for gate three. Notice where I input the values for the resources across all of the gates. For some projects, you may need to hire positions in the WMS or EMS salary schedules. Since those positions are a broad band, you'll need to input the base salary for that role in column F rather than having it pre-populated for you. So for this project, I know I'll need to hire a WMS4, and I'll put an estimated salary from that band into column F. Notice that the benefits and the other calculations will automatically populate for you, but you will need to manually key in the salary for these broadband positions. I'm going to go ahead and anticipate this resource is a full time 100% on the project for all of my gates. I've constructed my resource plan for the project by month for the biennium in which I have received funds, but I also need to do an annual resource plan for all of the out years for the duration of my project. So I'm going to go ahead and put the amount of time that I expect to need these resources in the years through the duration of the project. Notice that the values go out through the duration of the project. So my imaginary project is gonna go all the way through 2025. You'll also notice that the sum total values in row 107 are annual estimates as opposed to the monthly estimates for my biennial breakdown. I'll transition now to non-labor budgeted resources. This section is slightly different than the resource plan section. 
In column C, place the name of the vendor, company, or service provider. Column D is intentionally left blank. In column E, type in a brief one to two word description of the service or solution type. Column F contains subobject dropdowns for the relevant section. Column G is when the contract is expected to start. Column H is for when the contract is expected to end. And column I is for the total amount of the contract. So let's build some of these non-labor related expenditures into the budget plan. Since I'm under oversight, I know that I will need a professional quality assurance contract in place. I would put that under section three. In my example, my vendor is generic QA company. In column E, I'll describe their service as quality assurance, and these expenses will likely be paid out of subobject CA, and I'll begin that contract at project start and end it at project close. So I'm gonna input my project start date under contract begin, and my project end date under contract end. The total amount of the contract, we'll just make it easy and say is $240,000. Now, I'll need to place those costs in the month that I plan to spend them. In this case, I'll be paying this invoice monthly. So I'll just add $20,000 in each of the corresponding month cells. Now for my out years, I need to plan to spend the total annual cost. So that would be $120,000 per year. And you'll need to do that for the entire duration of your project. Note that you only do out your estimates to anticipated project completion. My hypothetical project goes to 2025, so I've put in costs through that date. So I'm also gonna buy some software for my project. So I'm gonna scroll down to that section you will follow the same process we just did, but complete these rows in section four. So I will add an implementation vendor here and fill out all of the necessary rows. I anticipate my software cost for this contract to be $2 million. So I'll add my implementation vendor and the software category is implementation. Selecting my appropriate sub object when I expect that contract to start, when I expect it to end, and like I said, it will be a $2 million contract. Accurately representing big ticket items such as software and the technology budget can be somewhat difficult, but you should compose your technology budget at the rate at which you expect to expend funds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just estimate that I'm going to buy my software in one of the months in gate two. Okay. Be sure to partner closely with your OFM analyst and your OCI oversight consultant if you have questions, but always ensure that you're populating your out years with your average annual cost. When developing a technology budget, sections one through six must be completed to represent your total budgeted costs. Ensure that when you are completing this template, you're also populating the out years as well. Scrolling towards the bottom of the book, you'll see some additional sections that contain running totals. In row 256, you can see through these formula values the total budgeted fund estimate populated by month. We have also incorporated the holdback amount and allotment amount as a formula in this workbook. These values are shown in rows 258 and 259. The holdback and allotment amounts are represented monthly. When those amounts are calculated and dispersed, they are done on a gate by gate basis. These rows are populated using formulas and no input is required. They are here for your information. The final piece of information that is required to be populated in this sheet is the fund source breakdown. This section begins in row 262. Agencies must input the different fund sources that will be used on the project in these rows. Due to the sheer number of fund sources, these cells do not contain any pre-populated values. Agencies must input the name of the fund in column G, the three-digit fund code in AFRS in column H, and the type of fund in column I. My project is all general fund state, so I will just itemize my fund row by mirroring the values from row 256 above. These fund source values are also summed together formulaically in row 271. 
there is a validation check that occurs between the two total rows, that is to say, rows 256 and row 271. This is a check to ensure that data has been transcribed consistently within this workbook. These values will appear as true or false in row 275. If the values match, you'll see true. If you might have typed something wrong, you'll see false. So that wraps up the key features of the Budgeted Resources tab. There is a hyperlink back to the input section in cell C277 that can take you back to that tab. I'm happy with my budgeted resources and input sheets. The next tab that we'll go over is the Agency In-Kind Resources tab. You'll notice immediately that this resembles the screen we were just on very closely. The core elements of this sheet are identical to the one we were just on, but the data that should be input in this sheet is limited to only the in-kind resources that will be assigned to the project. An in-kind resource is defined as an existing agency resource who will be spending greater than 25% of their time on the project. In addition to an in-kind resource plan, you should also include other staffing related costs for those types of resources in this section. In-kind resources are defined in detail in the technology budget overview document that is available on the OCIO's website. For more information, consult that document. Now I'll build an in-kind resource plan. As you can see, the interface and dropdowns are identical to the one we were using on the budgeted resources tab. The entire sheet behaves exactly like the budgeted resources tab, so most of the information with how to interact with this sheet has already been covered. One thing that you're going to want to take note of is that your gates are pre-populated for you based on your budgeted resources tab. This was done to avoid duplicative work and to prevent the possibility of errors. If you have an in-kind resource that you expect to spend a lot of time in the project, but perhaps drop off for an entire gate, you should put zeros in the columns in which that resource will not be working on the project. So for example, I expect to not use this resource that I've identified at all in the first gate of the project, but then I expect to use them full time on the project for the entire second gate before they drop off to zero again for the final gate of the project. I only need them for the first section of my project and I will put zeros for the values for the out years because I do not anticipate to use this resource at all during those out years. Beyond the resource plan, if there are other costs related to existing staff that you wish to capture, you would key those values into the other section below. There are no drop downs for this section, so just input the sub object you expect to use in column F. So all there is to cover on the agency in kind resources tab is it's very similar to the budgeted resources tab. The next tab that we're going to discuss is the deliverables tab. The deliverables tab is where you will define the key things that you will accomplish in each stage of the project. This section works hand in hand with the other budget sections. While those sections focus on how much money will be spent to achieve project outcomes, the deliverables section illustrates what your project expects to receive at each gate. As we look in this section, in row six, we have an example section of what some deliverables may look like. These sample deliverables are standard across projects and should be incorporated into your technology budget. Then, beginning in row 26, you will input the anticipated deliverables for each gate. In column C, you will place a description of what the deliverable is. In column D, you would identify the artifact that will be associated with that deliverable. In column E, you will identify the status of that deliverable. And once the deliverable is completed, you will input the date which it was completed in column F. You can see that the gate titles are pre-populated based on the values that I input from the inputs tab earlier on in this video. In cell 26, I'm going to describe my first deliverable. I'm going to use one of the sample deliverables above and reiterate it here. QA readiness assessment is the description. The artifact will be a document and the status of it is not started. I'm going to leave the date complete section blank because I have not completed that deliverable as of yet. As you're completing this section, provide as much detail about deliverables for the stages as you can. Be sure to partner with your OCIO consultant on completing this section. This is the last tab that you will fill out as a project. The final tab in the technology budget workbook is the summary tab. Summary tab is populated with data from other tabs in this workbook using formulas. You do not need to input any information into this tab at all. It is intended to provide an at-a-glance overview of the project 
based on information that you have input elsewhere in the workbook. You can see in this view all of the different values that have been input by me throughout the process on the summary tab. It is broken into three sections, the budgeted resources section, the in-kind resources section, and the total project cost section. To reiterate, there's no action needed on this tab. All values are derived from formulas. This tab serves as a high-level overview for stakeholders to understand your technology budget at a glance. That is all I have to cover today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about completing this workbook, don't hesitate to reach out to your OCIO consultant or OFM budget analyst. Thanks for watching and have a great day.